Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of the Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number six, which we will see has an implication of being combined for design. The word six in Hebrew is shesh. It has an ordinary meaning of counting up to the number six. Genesis 7, 6, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. It's also used for the ordinal number. Genesis 1, 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. We also see uh, this ordinal as a part of something, a sixth part of something, spelled with an aleph. Ezekiel 39.2 And I will turn thee back, but leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north part, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Just as we saw some, uh, maybe the number three, that uh, the, the number is used as a verb to divide something up into parts. And so we have this root, sha, which means to divide something up into six parts. Ezekiel 45, 13, this is the oblation that ye shall offer, the sixth part of an ephah of an omer of wheat, and ye shall give the sixth part of an ephah of an omer of barley. So that second phrase there, give the sixth part, is just a verb to six it uh, from the verb, from the number shesh. Shesh has another, uh, another few meanings, which sometimes uh, etymologists, people who discover the history of words, say comes from a foreign word but I think we will see how all these things are connected. So shesh is also fine linen, or sometimes it's called silk. The silk they're talking about is not from silkworms as we know them, but from a marine animal, a mollusk, where they pull out fine fibers and uh, twist it into thread also. Genesis 41, 42, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Many times in Exodus, as we're looking at the construction of the tabernacle, and in this verse of the garments for the priest, it says, fine twined linen, that is, shish, mashzar, and the idea is that the threads are twisted together. Exodus 39:28, and a mitre of fine linen, and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twined linen. So we have this picture of the, the threads being twisted together in order to uh, manufacture or create this thread, which will then be woven into garments and also for the curtains that surround the Mishkan, and also it talks about Shesh Mashzar when it is uh, talking about the Parochet, the curtain that hangs covering the most holy place. Another meaning for the word Shesh appears as marble, and if you check in your Strong's Concordance, you will see that it also is translated as alabaster. Alabaster is named for the Latin word alba, which means white. And so the whiteness and the hardness of the stone together are the picture of this word shesh. Actually, alabaster and marble are um, related in that they're both forms of calcium. Esther 1.6 Where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen, and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. 
Song of Songs 515. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. There's a variant uh, of this word with a yud in the middle, shayesh. It's also translated as marble. First Chronicles 29.2 Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things to be made of gold and the silver for things of silver, the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and the wood for things of wood, onyx stones and stones to be set, glistering stones of all diverse colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Another related word is Shoshana, which means lily. First Kings 719. And the chapters that were upon the work of the pillars were of lily work in the porch, four cubits. Song of Songs 2.2 two. As a lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. This is a beautiful verse and a picture of the Hebrew people in the desert, in the wilderness where things are just growing up, briars and brush and thorns. And in the midst of this setting is the lily. The beautiful, the has a beautiful aroma, and this is how the father sees Israel in the wilderness. This is a picture of a daylily from my garden, of which I have many. Um, you can see the six petals. The um, standard lily uh, that you see, the white one, is called the Easter lily. These are uh, Asiatic and Oriental lilies. They bloom for longer. The daylily blooms for one day, but they have exactly the same shape, the six-petal shape. I want to take a moment to talk about things of six in the world. We haven't done this on the other numbers, but I think to bring out the point of combined for design that we see in the things which are named for six. There are six molecules in a DNA strand. There are four bases, adenine, thymidine, guanine, and cytosine. There's one sugar, deoxyribose, that's the name of DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, and the backbone, which is phosphate. And when you see the picture of the DNA, it's a twisted strand, like a, a ladder going up where they're joined in the middle, but it's twisted like that fine linen. There are six sides to a cube, and this is the picture of the Holy of Holies. It is 10 by 10 by 10 cubits. And also carbon is six on the periodic table of elements. Carbon is the basis for life on this planet, and it has six protons. We're going to look at some cognate roots. Cognate roots are related to each other by linguistic rules of sound shift. We're going to look at sus, which has uh, sins instead of shins, and sus, which has samachs instead of shins. The root sus means to rejoice, Deuteronomy 28:63, And it shall come to pass that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. From the chapters of Blessing and Cursing. Isaiah 61.10 And I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. This uh, phrase, greatly rejoice, in Hebrew is sus asis. Uh, literally, I will rejoice a rejoicing. It's a very common poetical tool used in the Hebrew language. Asus is a horse. And it is related to the idea of rejoicing in the way that it gallops. And the movement of the horse, the, the pattern of the movement gives us an idea of exuberance and rejoicing. Exodus 15.1 Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh, and spake, saying, 
I will sing unto Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. In Psalm 20, verse 7, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of Yahweh our God. Another translation for this Seuss is uh, a kind of a bird. And we're going to see that in different translations it's translated differently. But again, it goes back to the idea of the, the flitting motion of the bird similar to the horse. In fact, there's another related word in modern Hebrew. One of the words for moth is sas. It's the same root. It carries that same flitting kind of movement. Isaiah 34.14, like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail without looking upward. O Yahweh, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. So the uh, phrase there, crane or swallow, there's no or. It's just sus agur. And agur can be a passive participle referring to to the kind of um, twittering that the bird does while it's moving about. Jeremiah 8, 7, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle, which should be turtle dove, and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of Yahweh. In the JPS, the two birds there are swapped. It actually says the swallow and the crane. And in fact, in the Septuagint, it's translated as sparrow. What is the importance of, of these ideas as they are connected together to the idea of six? Revelation 19.8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Just as a tabernacle is clothed in, um, in the linen and the priest is clothed in the linen, we ought to be clothed in that fine white linen, which is the righteousness. We should be clothed in the righteousness of Yeshua. And just as those things were designed as an outer covering, so our DNA is designed. It's twisted together. It's a creation of the Father to become our bodies which clothes and houses the Holy Spirit. Um, I've done a much more extensive study on how the Mishkan parallels the human being. This is not about how the things in the Mishkan represent Yeshua, but how the Mishkan and the human being are connected together. And if you're interested in receiving that study, please uh, get in touch with me. Revelation 3.12 him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which overcometh, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So, those that overcome, they will be the strong pillars, upholding the righteousness of God, showing them to be themselves, in the temple of God. Luke 12, 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Again, talking about our outer garment, our outer clothing, like the lilies of the field. Luke 12, 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, for ye are of more value than many sparrows. So much encouragement for how the Father designed us and how he keeps us and how he values us. And finally, Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. We should be ever joyful and thankful and grateful to our mighty God. I'm sure there are other ideas that will come to you as you meditate on these scriptures. 
In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim, Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. <laughs>